Hello and welcome to my channel. This is Lisa with Lisa's Faith and Budget Planning channel. I'm excited to be here today. I'm excited to be here with you. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Um, I have had several new subscribers and I am almost to 300 subscribers and I am super excited about that. So if you know someone who loves budgeting or wants to learn more about it and can recommend my channel, I would love, I would appreciate and love the um, if you would do that. And, um, if you are one of my subscribers that comes back and watches all the time, hello, it's good to see you again and welcome coming back and checking out what I got going on in the month of April. So these are my budget sheets. I sell these in Etsy. Um, it's Lisa's Faith Budget Plan in Etsy. And there's a link in the description box below. So go check it out and um, see what I got going on. I do budget sheets new every month with a different design at the top. And um, they're printables, they're PDFs, they're easy to use, and you can print them off in different sizes. So um, yeah, so let's go ahead and jump into this. I am um, trying to wrap my head around April. Can't believe it's already April. Um, lots happening, lots going on. It's one of those magic months where my husband gets three salary checks, not just two salary checks, when he gets paid every other Friday. And this last salary check, really has no bills attached to it. I do have one savings thing that I want to put with it and then I'll tie that the first of the next month uh, in the first of May, which I have a little note here so I can remember to do that. I don't have to remember actually, I just have to remember to account for it because my church, um, I have it set up on auto draft, <laughs> so makes it easier. Now, everything on this calendar that you see are mortgage, um, tithing, savings, um, uh, health insurance, um, utilities, couple subscriptions, insurances. Um, what else do I have on here? Um, oh, our internet, our home security system, and our cell phones. That's pretty much everything and some medical stuff. That comes out of our checking account. This represents the bills and cash I need in my checking account. What cash is coming in, what cash is coming out. Um, I don't think I've ever explained my calendars like that before, but that's what this calendar is for. So I come here when I go to check my checking account and I can check off, did this clear, did this clear? And if something isn't checked off and it's not cleared in the bank, I know to call and say, hey, what's up? Are you going to take this money or not? <laughs> kind of thing. Or if they you know, did the wrong amount or, or if something had changed, I have a way of referencing how much and what needs to be taken care of. Um, I do see already pending deposits and I don't mind checking things off when it's pending because I know it's actually gonna happen, um, especially when it comes to income because my husband gets military retirement check. It's the same every month and it comes in on the first of the month. So if you see here, payday and then payday. So my husband's getting his first pay, which includes military retirement, uh, VA disability, now, I did not see any VA education yet, but he hasn't signed up for his new classes yet, so that may come later, and that's fine. I don't budget for it. Um, I just wait until it shows up, and then I count it. So I'm going to leave that unchecked for right now. I see my son's SSI money, which he pays his rent with, and I see the first salary check. So this payday is all of this, these three or four items here, and then... This payday represents the salary check that's coming in. And then these two salary checks are the 15th and the 29th. And I won't worry about those until they happen. I used to put um, bills that went to a credit card over here in the sidebar. I have stopped doing that. I'm gonna try something new this month and I'll show you that in just a minute. Now, all of this on these dates in this order, I have put on my monthly budget. So. Now that I've laid all this out, I know what payday is paying for what bill. I know I, and I know I have the first through the 14th. So it's two full weeks I am budgeting for. So not only do I have to pay attention to, all right, what bills are coming out, but how much money I need for groceries and gas and other things that we have in the house. And I have four main categories I budget with. Um, the fir first one is grocery household. 
Um, second one is restaurants, third one is miscellaneous, and the last one is gasoline. Those are the order I always do them in, and you'll see that uh, in my other budget sheets. And I'm going to do a complete flip through of all my budget sheets for the month of April, so you get an idea of what I'm working on. Most of these budget sheets I do for video purposes. I don't have to do them, um, but pick the style that works best for you. If a monthly layout works for you, then do a monthly. Um, with this monthly, I also have this monthly budget where you can do the math. And as you can see, I've written everything out. It's a lot to write out. So I decided this time just to go ahead and have it pre-done and then do the paycheck one with you because everything is happening so fast this week. I need to get caught up. So I thought I'd do it all in one video. And there's that. So I put the budget amount, which is what I have over here, what I know or believe is going to happen. Um, this little sticker here is just saying that I tithe this pay on May 1st. So it goes in next month budget. It's just a little reminder sticky note there. But here um, I have a certain amount of income that I am counting on to come in. I even have listed here the sinking funds deposit. We'll do the math and I'll zoom in for this in a little bit. And then I have paycheck one, two, three, and four. And to be honest, I probably shouldn't have done it that way. I probably only need one, two, and three. So I don't need four, but I will leave this over here and just in case I need to do it separate, but we'll see. I don't know. Uh, grocery household, these are my transaction logs. I sell this in the store, but I only sell it saying transaction log. I don't sell it saying what um, I need to spend on um, miscellaneous gasoline and then a credit card log. So I'm kind of doing things in two sections. So this credit card log is for me to start uh, after I pay off the credit card in March going into April. I'm hoping to have a zero balance. I'm pretty sure I will and um, start with available credit fully on my credit card and then subtract down what I owe and what credit I have left as I'm using my different spending categories back here. Now back here, I track how much I budgeted for each spending category. Even though I am using the credit card and I have plenty of room on the credit card, it does not mean I should put that much on the credit card. It just means I have cash and I want to be able to pay cash for the credit card. And then in order to do that, I have to track exactly how much I'm doing for my categories. Now for video purposes, um, I have this calendar. Now this calendar is for my weekly check-in. I have highlighting system here. You see, I already have stickers down. These are bills that go onto the credit card. Now this calendar is for credit card purchases. So this is another way for me to limit how much I spend in one time period. I have to put it, well, I don't have to, but because I choose to do a weekly check-in with you guys to show you how that works, um, I don't necessarily need it, but I do enjoy doing it. And um, it definitely helps reinforce what I'm doing back here with the transaction logs and this credit card log. Um, I don't recommend doing all of these. A lot of it's double doing it or triple doing it. <laughs> I would say pick one that you're attracted to the most and then try that system. So they're very different systems. And I actually don't um, go through, do videos on these. I only do videos on the weekly check-in. So with that being said, I have different things that go on it every month. Um, we I added uh, the landscaper. We signed up online. For him to charge every time he does um, grass cutting so I don't have to leave him a check every week. Um, I know I have allergy shots coming out. Um, I have Etsy fees that come out, Amazon Music, Sling, HP Instant Ink, Lawn Guy, uh, allergy shots, HBO Max, Discovery Plus, my husband's something rather, uh, Audible. Um, here's if I go in above and beyond what I budgeted for in my spending categories and what I have here listed. If it's above that, then I'll make one visa payment and that's when it's due. And that's what that reminds me for. And I have one more grass cutting here and then that'll be it for the month. And yeah, <laughs> so this is a lot. This is a lot going on. A new system that I'm working out as far as the weekly check-in because I'm doing everything on the credit card. And when I get closer to starting working with the credit card, I'll show you how the point system works 
um, for um, what I'm adding to it and how I can get cash. So that's kind of what I am looking at there. But I'll put that in another video another day. And then I also have back here the weekly check-in. I have not printed my notes page. I normally have on this side where I just handwrite notes. Um, but the weekly check-ins here, I will have um, everything broken down here. And then I'll have once I get my notes page printed, I'll put it over here. And then I will have my sinking funds and savings tracker, which I have not filled out yet. But I am using my sinking funds this month. I'm using two of them. It's over $550. Um, but all that money is in cash in my savings account. And that is what you're going to see back here when I do this. Um, sinking funds deposit. And that is the amount. Um I'm debating whether I have time to do both this and the paycheck one setup. Yeah, I'll do them both. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and zoom you guys in. Um, we're going to total up these numbers and then we're going to set up paycheck one and um, get the month of April started and go from there. So I will be right back. Okay, I am back and I am back and ready to total up this income total up the budget um, as far as bills and expenses, and then go from there. So here we go. Um, military retirement is 1598.01 plus the 2287.52 for my husband's VA disability. So my husband is retired Navy, 20 years, uh, first class petty officers when he retired, what he retired at, if you're curious. Um, medical, dental, vision, all that stuff comes out. We still go to a medical treatment facility and um, we're still in the same community we were when he got out of the Navy. So, but that will be changing pretty soon. <laughs> lots, lots of things happening here. Uh, VA disability, um, when they, when he got processed out, he went to the VA, they x-rayed him from head to toe, looked at his medical records and found him 90% uh, disabled um, based on the um, long-term effects of being active duty Navy. And so there's that. I do not budget his VA education benefits. It's a post 9-11 GI Bill. And uh, when he takes classes, I just wait for it to show up. And then I add it. I usually have it. Not sure where I left off. I got a phone call. My phone, uh, I'm recording with my phone still. Um, but um, yeah, I was talking about VA education and um, my husband usually transfers that to a separate account and that's his money. <laughs> so anyways, moving on from there, um, my son does pay this rent and we pay his health insurance out of his rent. So seven eleven is what we get. It also covers any groceries and, uh, utilities and stuff like that. So, uh, salary, $2,000. $382.25. Now, when I write down salary, the, the same amount three times, it is a salary that he gets paid. This is after taxes, after Roth, um, after um, any extras that we have taken out of the paycheck. This is what gets deposited in the bank. And um, this is his salary check. Now, with that being said, his salary check... Um, he will be getting overtime because he is leaving again. Um, he is a contractor for the Navy, so he does deploy and he will be leaving again very soon. So I know these checks are going to have some kind of overtime or reimbursement money in there, but I do not budget for that. I only budget for the salary and live off the salary. And then I usually save a lot of the uh, overtime and we're going to need to save all the overtime as much as possible. Um, this time around as well. So that's the first salary check plus the second two, three, eight, two, two, five, plus the um, third one. Two, three, two, two, five. All right. Now the last thing I'm going to do is add this $533. I have a $230 Orkin, uh, not to Orkin, uh, Climate Makers, which is our heat and air conditioning company we use and they maintenance our um, heater, heat and air conditioning. And they keep it tip-top shape and I feel safe and don't have to wonder, is this the season something's gonna break? Um, they 
they're great and I love them. And then Orkin is their termite bill has come up and it's 323, I believe. So um, between the two of those, I trans I'm going to transfer $553 out of savings uh, to cover that and write checks for it at the beginning of this month. So plus the 553. And that gives us a total of, I will make sure on my laptop here where I have all my total totals. Okay, this number matches what my Excel spreadsheet is, and it does better math than I do because I always type the wrong number occasionally. <laughs> so I'm going to write this number down. I'm going to move this over just a little bit so I can have room for my hand. Um, there we go. So we have one twelve thousand two hundred and ninety six dollars and twenty eight cents. So that is what the minimum amount of money uh, we are expecting to get this month. Um, based on an extra salary check and so that's not normally there and the sinking, uh, sinking funds deposit. So those two items are not normally there so normally it's less than this but um, because we're getting that extra pay that's why the number is so high. Now when my husband gets paid the military retirement VA disability VA education and the rent just that portion there I do $158 in Roth IRA um, savings. I save it for next year is what I'm doing. But then there was another salary check that's happening on the same day. So that's another $158. And what I have done, let me find my book here. What I've done is um, come up with a system to save up $6,000 by the end of the year with this um, kind of uh, savings challenge or savings budget sheet or whatever you want to call it. So as you see here, it says April 1st, April 1st, two nest eggs. They're everything on here, uh, each nest egg here and here is $158. So I get to color these two in um, because I will be making that deposit. And in fact, if you don't mind, uh, I will go ahead and color that right now uh, and get that out of the way. So I'll be putting 316 away, which is two of these nest eggs. And I'm like, look how fast this is going. Um, I can't believe we're already into April. And I'm going to scoot this over and kind of move this in this way. And we are ready to put another deposit to my Roth IRA savings. That is so cool. Um, I wish I had thought of it sooner, but I'm glad I'm doing it now, and it's never too late to save. Um, you may not get the savings you want, but God knows how to multiply. If you've ever heard the story of fish and loaves, um, where they um, had, I don't know if it was like five fish or five loaves or something like that, but um, in the Bible story on the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus, I believe that's what I'm saying this all correctly. I'm still learning all these stories. Uh, but they were able to feed the multitude with just that little bit that that young man brought for lunch. And um, men, women, children, everybody, until they were satisfied. I mean, how cool is that? So even if your savings is meager, it doesn't mean that God won't multiply it. So you may not see it right now. Just pray and you know, be a Jesus follower, you know, that that's where it all comes from. So I am not worried about it. Alrighty, that's taken care of. And now the eggs. So I'm claiming it. And he will protect and provide through these savings. And one more egg. There we go. That is done. Yay. So April 1st, April 1st, those two will go in. Uh, as soon as the deposit hits, I went ahead and colored it. So it's already taken care of and back to the budget. <laughs> so now that we have this taken care of, I'm going to scoot this sheet up and then we're going to finish off calculating this page and the other page. So the 316 is already in there. Oh, I love that John 316. That's what it reminds me of. Oh, that's so cool. Um, yeah, look it up. John chapter three, verse 16. Uh, very famous, popular verse. Uh, anyway, 
let's go and calculate this. So the mortgage is $1,900, so $1,990.98. Um, helping hands is $200. That's a tithing to the military retirement check. Um, we have tithing on the salary check as well, which is uh, $310. And then a Greater Europe Mission is another tithe that we do on the VA disability. 23175. There we go. Uh, natural gas this month was $131.51. This is an actual number. Usually the only thing I don't have an actual number for is um, city utilities. And that's our water, sewer, and stuff like that. Um, that... This month we don't get a bill. When months we don't get a bill, I pay a hundred dollars, and then the next month a bill will come, and then I put down the actual. Um, that way, it's paid every month, but it's not necessarily um, it, they get money extra or they get money early, and it just counts as a credit towards my bill. Next thing I have here is uh, my son's health insurance, five twelve, so he can stay in the Tricare system with us in the same provider, and. Um, Pretty good. We're, we're happy with that. Um, Paramount Plus is $5.99. Hopewell is a $113. It's a Christian counseling service that I go to with my husband when he's here and on my own when he's not. And um, mental health is a priority in our family and we love it. So, um, yeah, there's that. Uh, $122.40 for Geico Insurance. And then this denotes that it's another paycheck period. And um, that is the IRA for that paycheck period. So we're gonna add that, $158. And then, a, let's see, electric, the bill said it was uh, $89.30. And then here's the city utilities. So I just pay $100 this month. Life insurance, eighty-seven fifty-six. That's for all four of us. Uh, sinking funds, uh, $375.51. And then Tithe, three ten. And then iTunes for storage on my phone and videos is two nine nine. And then I need to go to the next page. Here we go. Fifty-six forty-six is our Vivian Home Security System. Plus T Mobile, which is 217, plus 8271, which is our Verizon Internet. And then we're budgeting $1,200 for groceries, restaurants, uh, $450. Um, miscellaneous, hopefully, we stayed $550. We were over $1,200, $1,300, $1,400. I don't know what we are this month, but in March, but it's ridiculous. But we were enjoying ourselves, so that's fine. Um, and we had some overtime money that we could use to do that. Uh, let's see, 550 and then plus 250 for gas. My husband will not be here, so he can, um, or we can save a little bit on gas. He's, we won't be driving his Jeep, so that won't, won't be a problem. And then Orkin, Termite Bill, and Climate Maker. So these are both sinking funds. I just put a little note next to it. The cash is going to be deposited into the checking account, and then when the check's clear, that'll be fine. So they kind of come out in the wash. That's no problem. 323 plus the 230. There we go. Enter. So our bills for the month of April, we're looking at 8416 $8,416.16. Um, I'm going to take that number and I'm going to subtract the income because obviously that is less than our income and see what kind of number we get. $12,296.28. There we go. So that's $3,880.12 for the month. And let me go ahead and get that. Ah, my sheets are stuck together. There we go. There we go. Come to the bottom here and write out $3,880.12. 
So that's what we're looking at right now. And that looks pretty good to me. So is it exact? No, I won't have exact numbers until the budget is, or till um, the actual numbers come in. And um, then we'll know for sure. So this is the monthly budget. This is what we're working with um, as far as the entire month. And I have some room still left on here for any items that are popping up that need to be cut and paid. And I don't, um, I'm not aware of it right now. So we have plenty of room for that. I call this my unbudgeted section. And so all you have to do here is if you have, let's say you forgot a bill or let's say um, you had to buy uh, or pay for something for your car, like mechanical stuff. Um, I, I use Amco for my vehicle. So I would put Amco, I would put $0 because it wasn't budgeted, and then I would put the actual number, and then I would mark in red um, the overage. Uh, black means it's in, uh, you got more money back, and red means, for me anyway, that you had to spend over what you expected. So that's what I do over here in the over and under section. Uh, but yeah, that is simple as that. And then when you get your actuals as they start happening, you just kind of write them as they come in and um, or you start doing them or paying the bills. And that is how I do my budget. So now uh, let's see, paycheck one is over here. So I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through this part, fill it in and um, go back and uh, show you what it looks like just for paycheck one. So I'm gonna grab my notes over here because I have a cheat sheet <laughs> on what's going on and you'll see what's just gonna happen on the first part of the month and I'll be right back. Nobody told me to settle down Day nights and late nights don't get around But there's something about you Something about you I like about you I like You're crazy for saying I should slow down But maybe I'm escaping the love we found There's something about you Okay, I am back. So I've already done my monthly budget. I know my income is more than my um, out, uh, my expenses that I planned for the entire month. Now I have to see once the first income comes in here um, to see if this can cover all the expenses I know that have to come out during paycheck one. So you know what bills come out during paycheck one, you wanna make sure the income inflow or the income coming in for paycheck one can cover everything that you plan or have to uh, pay for in during that first 14 days, which is the first through the 14th of April for me, that is what needs to be covered. Um, sometimes the dates shift a little bit from Friday to Friday, but um, th that's what it is for this month in April, so that's um, pretty cool. But we're going to total up these numbers right here and just show what income this is going to be. So this is a budget for actual cash that's actually in the bank account that you will actually have going in um, for us uh, April 1st. And it's important to know what that is. It's important to do the monthly budget just to make sure the entire month can be covered if you need to shift money around. But here, this, you get the opportunity to work with actual cash and discover do you have enough or do you need to use savings to cover until the next uh, inflow of cash. And then you can pay back your savings if, if necessary. Now, well, this is just the budgeting half. I do have the actual numbers just like on the other sheet. Um, you, you track it on the actuals um, because it could be off a little bit. Something could change. You just don't know what it's going to be. This is not like a rotisserie where you can set it and forget it. <laughs> it's just not going to work that way. So um, let's go ahead and total up the deposits. I know are coming on the first of the month, paycheck one, um, $1,598 and one cent plus $2,287.52 plus $2,382.00. 25 cents plus seven $711 plus $553. So that is the total of everything that is coming in on the first. Now, 
balance forward, I put $0 because I don't want to rely on that. I just want to have a place for it because I know some cash is going to go from March to April sitting in the checking account, which is people typically call the buffer of the checking account or the rollover or whatever you want to call it. So uh, let's write this number down here. $7,000. $5,531.78. Okay, now I need to make sure this is enough to cover all these bills I have listed below. So just like you saw before in my monthly bills, these are the first two weeks. This is up to the 14th of April, first through the 14th of April. These are all the bills there I had on my bill calendar. Not what's on, um, you know, I just realized I need to kind of look at that as well. So before I total that up, let me grab that sheet real quick. So I pulled off my bill calendar on the bills that are coming out for April, but this is my calendar for my spending categories, including what bills go on the visa. So I'm going to take the 1st through the 14th here real quick off camera. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six things I have on my calendar. You can't see it all because I haven't zoomed in too close. But these six things, and I'm going to list, um, I'm not going to list them individually. I'm just going to mark it as a spending category underneath all of these. So um, let me do that, and I'll be right back. Okay, I am back. So um, I'm not going to list each individual one because it will take up all these lines and then some. But I am going to re show you I have um, some Etsy fees I know I'm going to have come out. Um, Amazon Music's going to come out, Sling is going to come out, HP Instant Ink's going to come out, Boss Land and Lawn is going to come out, and my allergy shots are going to come out. So those are the items that I have to budget for, and I have decided to budget $170 for all of that. So um, with the spending categories, $170. Okay, so there's that, and this will be Visa Bills. So these are things I know that it's going to be charged. I know I will be paying for this part of paycheck one. Um, there may be more um, on the visa. Other than that, that would be unbudgeted. That'd be something totally separate. Uh, but other than that, that's where we're at right now. So let's go ahead and total up this part for the bills. And then we'll see if we have enough to cover um, the bills with all the income. So I'll be right back. You know what? There's one other thing I forgot, and that's why this number is not right. Oh, man. I hate doing this part. Before I commit to this, and this is why I love erasables, um, let's try this again. Um, I also need to put, I got the sinking funds deposit, but I also need to take it back out. So that means I also have to put the bills for sinking funds, which is um, Orkin. Termite. And this is an annual contract, $323.00, and then Climate Makers, makers uh, Climate, and that is $230.00. This is to keep the heating AC maintenance going properly, and um, also we get priority when we make phone calls for repairs and stuff, which we rarely have to do. So let me total this up one more time. And then I'll be right back. Okay, that is it. So $5,881.63. So that is that number. And now we're going to subtract it from the income. Oh, you didn't even see me write that in. Sorry. <laughs> $7,531.78. So that, ah, there we go. That makes a lot more sense. Uh, let me write that number again. Because I just, I didn't write it very well. So $5,881.63. And then the total difference is $1,650.15. So that is that. So 
paycheck one is budgeted the month is budgeted and i am ready for april so i'm going to zoom you guys out and i'll be right back so now i'm ready for the new month of april i know two things for sure um as long as everything goes to plan on the income i budget on the income the lowest possible amount and then um I budget my bills and make sure that my income is more than my expenses and that is true for the entire month but it is also true for the time period that coming up with the actual money coming in which is paycheck one the income coming in is going to be more than the income going out, or not income <laughs> the expenses bills and expenses that are going out and this is mostly filled up so i might um yeah that's that's a lot going on right there so if i have extra stuff i only have two lines for it i might take one of the other budget sheets because i don't i i put paycheck four knowing i had a paycheck four but i put paycheck one and two which is the government checks plus the salary check on one and this is two weeks two works two weeks worth of bills so i might move this sheet move my sheets around and put this like put a sticker over this and put that as a continuation of paycheck one. Who knows what I'll do? I don't know. So paycheck one's done. The monthly budget is set up and I showed you all my budget sheets. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more of my videos, please subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys next time. Have an amazing and blessed day. Bye.